right, it's currently 2.38, I'm just now leaving home, and I don't mean 2.38 a.m., it's 2.38 p.m., I'm fishing the afternoon today, and there's a specific reason for that. The area that I'm heading to the last several days has had a rising tide in the morning, falling tide in the afternoon, I really wanna fish a falling tide today. It becomes so important this time of year as you start transitioning into fall, just like my chance is so much better. The bad thing with fishing in the afternoon this time of year, of course, is thunderstorms, and they are all around, so I'm getting kind of a later start than I really had hoped to, and I might have to dive some storms out there, but if I get a chance the fish and I find clean water, I know I'm gonna find bait, so I definitely like my chances. All right, I've just pulled up, gotten everything set up. Now where I wanted to fish, I had a plan mapped out in my head, but there was a big storm over the area I intended to fish, so I kind of had a change on the fly. And now I've come into this area, and with every fishing trip, you've got aspects that work for you and aspects that work against you. And that's certainly true on this one. Right now, the tide is completely dead. It's not moving at all, which tells me I'm here at the peak of the rise, which is fine. I'd rather be a little bit into the falling tide because this water's up. It's not up crazy, but it is up. But as things move along, the fishing should get better. And that tide gets lower and that sun gets lower, although the sun right now is completely covered by clouds. I'm starting with, I think it's an alien colored H&H Kakaho. This water's just, uh, it's okay, it's pretty good. But with that low cloud deck, I wanted something a little more visible. And right now I'm kind of just biding my time, trying to pick up a fish or two while this tide is dead. Not terribly optimistic until this water starts moving. And we do have a good tide range today, so it is gonna move well. And we also have a, a slight west wind, so that's gonna help it to fall. It won't stay dead long. I can't tell what kind of bait is in here. It really looks like pogies, a little small shad. But the amount of bait tells me I'm in the right place. Once this water starts moving, the fishing should get really good. Just like every day, you gotta figure out what they want, how they want it presented, and where they're holding. So today I really gotta put the puzzle together quickly because I'm fighting the clock. It's 4.15 and sunset today is around 7.20. So I've only got about three hours to fish. And the rain, oh, there's a fish. Oh, a trout. Keeper speckled trout, look at that. Look at that. All right, it's about a 13 inch fish. These fish are inside already. I just love it. You saw my last video, caught a bunch of trout inside. Most of them on topwater baits. This one hit an H&H &H Kakaho. Good start to the day. I'm not necessarily in here trout fishing. I'm just trying to catch whatever I can. But the trout this time of year, getting the bends of these bayous, they'll stay there all the way through November. The pattern's definitely kicked off early this year. Man, it didn't happen last year until like October. And I don't think they're like crazy thick yet. But you'll take anything you can get this time of year. It's the first week of September. And obviously September is not known as being a very good speckled trout month. In fact, it's probably the worst. So if you can come in the marsh and fish these bends of these bayous and pick up you know, 12, 15 speckled trout per person, that's a really good September day. I take that anytime. And the good thing with this pattern is as the water temperatures cool, it just gets better and better. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Publius Sporting Goods. Make a switch to a fluke. Not generally the best search bait, but I'm seeing so much bait in here. So many pogies. This fluke kind of looks like a pogey. And I don't have a lot of wind, so I can really kind of take my time through here. Take my time and fish quickly because <laughs> I got to beat the clock. Okay, I hope you see that blade of grass right there, but it's definitely going this way. So our tide has started to move. That's a good sign. Glad to see that. It's not rolling yet, but it's definitely beginning the process. So much surface activity. It's going to be hard for me to not throw that topwater bait. Probably too early in the day, but on my last trip, I caught some fish on topwater late in the morning. It's like 8, 8.30 such a nice afternoon particularly when it was cloudy just beautiful back here very quiet okay now i can see the bait it is pogies it's a million of them an absolute million these fish have no shortage of food that's for sure all right with all this bait around here i kind of feel like i just need to put the trolling motor on high and throw a spinner bait and i got my favorite one for the marsh soft wire h and h gold number four quarter ounce death grip jig head and a shrimp creole matrix shad Marsh fish love this combo, particularly bass and reds, but also speckled trout. Caught many speckled trout on this combo. Oh, oh shoot. Just missed a fish. First cast, that's a good sign. Oh, there's a fish, there's a fish. Oh, bass, I lost him. 
Oh, there's a fish. That's a bass. All right, marsh bass. <laughs> Not a big one, but big enough to keep. About 11 inches or so. He will make the fish fry. All right, that's three hits on our spinner bait. Definitely looking like that might have been the right call. You know, these summertime fish get really, really aggressive, and you get those quick reaction bites with the spinner bait. They're aggressive in a situation like this, where you got cloudy skies later in the day. We had a rain shower, so it cooled things off, and they're definitely looking to feed. Well, you see a beautiful trinoce like this on a falling tide. Whew, sometimes they can be stacked, but even in a trinoce, you gotta find the sweet spot. If they have one, sometimes trinoces are devoid of fish inexplicably. Now, this one doesn't have a whole lot of bait, so maybe why there's nothing here. There's nothing here that wants my spinner bait. Let's move on. Oh, there's one. Another bass. About the same size as the last. World-class trophies, huh? Look at that. And the way they're hitting the spinnerbait tells me they definitely want it. I mean, they're clocking it. I haven't been fishing it very long. I've already gotten four bites. So that's a good sign. Hopefully they stay on it. Oh, look at that. That's a better bass. That's a better bass. Not giant, just better. And barely hooked. Lucky to get him. Our spinnerbait pattern is definitely holding. It's good to see. There's a fish. Ooh, are you still on, big boy? <laughs> yes, he is. Face full of grass. All right, big guy. All right, one thing I've definitely noticed today, I am fanatical about fishing outside bends and bayous, but that's not where the fish are today at all. I haven't got a single fish in an outside bend. They're all in the inside bends. The points and the pockets adjacent to the points and these inside bends, that's where the fish are. But I tell you, I really expected to roast today, but that has not been the case thanks to these clouds. It's really the negative of fishing in the afternoon is the heat sometimes can be unbearable. You know, today it's it was supposed to be a little bit windy today, but it's actually been dead slick. It would be really bad if we didn't have this cloud cover. And we're supposed to get a cool front next week. It'll be nice, it'll feel nice, and it'll actually improve this fishing, no doubt. As you get later in the winter, the cold fronts actually kind of put a little pause on the fishing. But in the fall, you can fish right after a front comes through, next day, two days after, whatever. And the fishing will just be better. Even if it's windy, you just got to find clean water. Oh, there's a fish. That big boy. Oh, it's a speckled trout. Look at this. Look at this. There we go. <laughs> On a spinnerbait, as I was mentioning before, they do work for specks. And it certainly worked for this one. Keep a fish. Gotta love it. Now, that one wasn't an outside bend. Old habits die hard. It's tough for me not to throw into these outside bends. And that's where that speck was. Now people often ask where I'm fishing and it's a question I never answer because it's never my goal to just X marks the spot and people go there and catch fish because the reality is maybe the first guy who goes there will catch them. The second guy probably won't and the 20th guy surely won't. There's marsh like this absolutely all over South Louisiana. And if you do some map study at home, set up a game plan before you ever hit the water. And of course, adjust on the fly like I had to do today. You can almost always put together a good box. I mean, we are gonna have the days where conditions are bad, tide's not moving, it's too windy, whatever, where we really struggle. Happens to everybody. But it's difficult not to have success with good conditions in South Louisiana. It just is. Ooh, what are you? Oh, goodness, boy. That fish is not that big. It's a bass, but man, he's not that big. He freaking smoked it. What the heck? <laughs> Dude, you are a uh, super bass. Super bass! Thanks for the fight, buddy. 
And I'll tell you what, based on my experience today, if you come into any of these marsh areas and you see a bunch of shad, throw this gold spinner. Of course, shad are silver. They're not really gold, but I got almost no bites until I started throwing this. I'm just so glad there are trout in inside waters already. It just adds another option, another target, something else to entertain you. Ooh, nice bass. Nicer, nicer bass. All right, all right. Took it deep. Love to see it. Just a summertime marsh bass. They're fun to catch. I know they're not big, but they're fun to catch. Who can complain about this? Once again, another one on a point. Pattern is definitely holding. Oh, there's a fish. Out of the same mold. It's very difficult to see the grass edges here because we got such poor visibility with this cloud deck. So I'm having to kind of guess and pull that bait over the grass and just drop it past it. That's where that fish was. He smoked it. This episode of Marchman Masson is brought to you by Major Chad and by Bill Lewis Lures and by Flackerman's Parish and by Versamax Corks and by Delta Marina. Oh! <laughs> Bad hook set. Good night. Ah, oh, Todd. There's a fish. Another bass. Bye bye. Bye, Felicia. Oh, man. There's a fish. Nice bass. That's the bass of the day right there. All right. Pretty one. Pretty one. Not super big, but this is about as big as I'll keep them. Anything over that goes back. All right, big boy. Welcome to the team. Oh, goodness. Boy, a big red fish just blew up on my top water, but he missed it. Oh, <laughs> he was a beast. I've been fighting him a while. I picked up this Matrix mullet just to fish this little trinas. Threw it way back in there. I don't know if it's a trinas or just a little pond that opens up to this bayou. Tons and tons of bait back there. And a red just, pool. he blew up on it, but he missed it. Man, what a beautiful afternoon of fishing here in the marshes of South Louisiana. You know, September's a tough month, let's face it, but there's always something biting here. And it definitely helps when you can play the tides and fish on that falling tide. So important in the fall. Well, I think I'm gonna make one more cast. And then call it a trip. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson. Come on, baby, blow up on my top water. <laughs>